Hi there, I'm your host June Mack and you're listening to The Little Psychic Podcast, the podcast with easy to understand, fun and down to earth spiritual learning which awakens in you the infinite intuitive power we all hold within. Little Psychic, I hope to ignite, nurture and drive your own psychic expansion. Are you ready? This episode is sponsored by the Little Psychic Beginners Course, the new self-study edition, my pre-recorded spiritual training course you can access in your own time, whenever you like, as many times as you like, and all from your phone or laptop. Easy and fun learning on everything from intuition, connecting with your guides and spirit, how to take care of your energy, psychic and mediumship work, and so much more to get you started on your own little psychic journey eight training modules, PDFs, meditations, workbooks, activations, and learning videos. This content and value is huge and currently only $300 for this self-study edition. Payment plans available. Head to junemack.com forward slash little psychic school. Hello and welcome to episode 17 of the Little Psychic podcast called Starting Your Soul-Led Business. This episode features Shannon the Intuitive Guide. Hello and welcome to the Little Psychic Podcast with June Mack. I am your host. I am a psychic expansion teacher, intuition mentor, psychic clairvoyant healer and I'm pretty excited today. Uh, I will be talking about something slightly different but something that I think I've had quite a few questions on which for a while I didn't realize it was a thing but I think it's a thing so I'm excited to sort of chat about it. Um, We're going to be talking about starting your own soul-led or spiritual business. And when I say we, I have a very special guest here today, Shannon, the Intuitive Guide. Um, Welcome, welcome. Thank you, my love. (laughs) I actually know Shannon um, from my little psychic school membership, but we have formed a friendship over, has it been a year since that you've been in the little psychic school now? It has been, and and but by the time this comes out, it'll be well and truly over. Again. Yes, it will. Um, and I love Shannon because she loves Vanderpump Rules just as much as I do, which I forgot to ask you about before the start of this uh, podcast episode, before we started recording, because the time of recording, the finale was on last night of the reunion. So I feel oh. like we have to come back to this conversation because that was pretty, <laughs> pretty was epic. epic last night. Yes, and some of the things I noticed about Shannon in the beginning was the similarities that we have had in our um, own journey. So I'll let you explain or go into your background a little bit or tell them about yourself before I just talk for the next five minutes. (laughs) All right, guys. So, yeah, I am known as Shannon the Intuitive Guide. I'm a psychic medium, I love reading tarot, um, healer, um, all round woo woo, love it. Um, and could talk about it all day long. That's why podcasts are awesome. <laughs> so yeah, so I, um, do a lot of readings, um, via zoom because I'm based in Sydney and it just enables everyone out there, no matter where you are, um, to come along and have a reading. So, and <laughs> as June had no, there's no structure. It just, it is what it is and whatever you guys want to do. And I will bring you whatever it is that you need at that time. And Shannon is really great. I had a reading with Shannon and she can now also call herself an international psychic reader. (laughs) So that's something to add to your bio, which is super exciting. And it's just been amazing to watch your journey over the past year. And I thought it would be interesting to get her on this episode about talking about starting a solid or a spiritual business because she's Uh, We're both sort of at not different points. We're at similar points, but different points with what it is that we do. But it's interesting to get a different uh, perspective and to hear just, I guess, your point of view as well. So I guess, first of all, I wanted to ask you, some people are going to be listening to this and going, what do you mean (laughs) soul-led business? What do you exactly mean by that? What's your interpretation, Shannon? My interpretation is that it's my soul's purpose was to have this business. There was, so 
I had never intended to have a soul led business. It was never a goal. It was never achievement that I was hoping to reach. So for me, it was that my soul had to do this. It was almost like I didn't have a a choice, but I mean, it's a wonderful choice to be honest, (laughs) but it's that it just, my soul was meant to come on this earth and do this work and help others and that's what it is for me and when I with my this my soul led or spiritual business it's listening to my, my guides my intuition and knowing what the right thing is to do and what the right steps are I guess for me and for the people I draw in that to me is what a soul led business is and that with it being your own soul and what you're meant to do could very much be different for everybody what that is. Yeah. That's the amazingness of it is that, you know, there could be lots of intuitive psychics, mediums, whatever you want to call yourself. And in the beginning, as June knows, I struggled to call myself a psychic. That's why the intuitive guide came up first. But it's you can bring what you need to because there is billions of people in this world who need different things and we're here to help serve those people. So having so many options and who you're drawn to is amazing because, you know, us having a soul-led business means your soul is drawn to us as well for a particular reason. Oh, I like that. I love that interpretation. Um, That's such a cool way um, to put it into words. And I agree with absolutely all of that, but I've never actually thought about putting it in that way, which I really like. But I guess um, a way that I would probably explain it is that, well, I like it how you said you kind of, your soul chose this business. It's sort of like, there are a lot of people out there who are amazing at business, but they might pick something because they're like, this is a new hot thing. This is a new dumb thing that um, everyone's doing. This is how you're going to make money. I would never do that because that doesn't have enough profit margin. You know, there's a lot of people that are really great at that. And there's no absolutely offense to anyone who's like that. I have many friends who are great and they, it just, it makes them happy to make, you know, money and to be really successful. But that's not the reason why for me, for example, I started (laughs) this business similar or exactly what Shannon said. I started it because I had that need to, and I really, really wanted to every ounce of my being with, yeah, knew that this was something that I should be doing. Um, And I guess making decisions moving forward, I have made many decisions that people in business, because I have many friends who are in business, including my husband, who's run businesses uh, for a long time, um, brick, brick and mortar businesses too, who might say that's actually not the smart decision to make in terms of business <laughs> speaking. But everything within my soul, so being soul-led, is telling me I don't care if this is the dumb thing to do. This is how my intuition is telling me this should be done and it has worked out perfectly for me. The times that I tried to listen and, you know, absolutely no offence to my partner or no offence to other friends who have given me different advice, but the times that they sort of talked me out of things that felt good for me were the times that stuff just didn't work out um, because it's not initially what I wanted. And that's when I called in the the, not the wrong clients, but clients that weren't solely aligned, you know, with what it is that I do. These are the times that stuff just didn't feel good. Uh, so I guess running a solid business means it feels, it should feel amazing to you. It should feel good moving forward. Does that make sense? <laughs> it does. And it's, you put something out there and people are attracted to it. So I'll give you an example at the beginning of this year. Um, like I said at the beginning, I love doing tarot cards. And I remember doing a New Year tarot reading for myself and for, for my other half, Julian. And he, he goes to me, oh, you should put this up as an offer for other people. And I'm like, I sat on it for a minute and I was like, you know what? He's right. And I'm going to put that up there. It just feels right. It didn't even cross my mind for a beginning. But it's, the minute he said that, it just felt like it was what I needed to do. Mm. And I thought, oh, I'll put it on my website. I'll put it on Instagram. And if anybody, ta- like if one person takes it up, wonderful. That's one person that I've given a message to, to kick off their year. Do you know what? I had a massive take up on it. And yes, it was so good. like, it even shocked me. It was that, you know, I wouldn't, there was no strategy. There was no launch, big launch. There was no lead up. There was nothing. Yep. It was just a spur of the moment. Yep. This feels right. I'm going to put it out there. And so many people like because the way I did it was I'd take a photo, I'd do a voice recording, and I'd email it to that 
customer, client, you know, soul aligned person. <laughs> um, and I'd get so many, like pretty much everyone who I did it for wrote back and said, wow, that resonated so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I was like, wow, I wasn't even going to do this. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing is like, if something feels really good and you just put it out there, sometimes you get, you do get really surprised and you're like, where are these people coming from? How did they even know about this? I'm like, who is this? So another person just signed up, but I'm not sure where they're from or, or how they found this um, because it feels good. And if it feels good, that's your intuition. That's, you know, that's telling you this is the right thing for you to do. And there are a lot of light workers out there at the moment who maybe they've just started on their, you know, psychic development or spiritual development. And when I say light worker, that's a huge banner. It's basically anyone who brings light into this world. So you could be a Reiki healer. Um, what's another, what's another healing modality? Oh, I've got it in Sound my bowl healer. Yes. You, could, you could just be someone who does remote healing. I recently bought a tuning fork. Like there's so oh, many cool. things yeah. you can do for healing. It's not just psychic like medium work. Yeah. It's not just psychic medium work. There's, I mean, like a naturopath really to some, to, to a degree there, they're a light worker too. Um, kinesiology, that's a word that I was actually. <laughs> I'm glad you said it because I can never pronounce oh it. Oh my right. gosh. There's theta healing. Um, there's past life regression. Uh, there's, you know, spiritual teachers. There's so many different modalities or things that are considered as, as a light worker. And there's so many more people opening up. And there are a lot of people who come to me as mentoring clients who are just starting out learning, so at a good starting point, but they have this dream like one day I want to read cards and I want to read cards, you know, for other people. Uh, I want to do this as, as a business. And there are some people that don't as well. But the reason why I wanted to do this episode is because of the alarming rate <laughs> of light workers that are just popping up all over the place. You know, death jeweler, um, that's becoming like a, a really more popular thing. Have you heard of that, Shannon? Not until the, it's so funny, like the universe works in weird ways, right? So Julian was watching 911 on Monday night and there was a death doula as one yeah. of the roles on there. And I was yeah. like, and then that got me down the rabbit hole of Googling, like, is this a real thing or is yeah. this just for the show? So yeah. yeah, that was only like a couple of nights ago that I saw that. I was like, you know, if you're unwell and you know that the end is coming, like how cool is that? Amazing. Yeah. And I've got some clients now, actually more than one, who are also really great mediums. Can you imagine, you know, being, you know, your your last few days, but being able to have that comfort of don't worry, you know, your husband's waiting there or this mm. is what's going to happen when you pass over. So you've got that support that you have that support when you're bringing new life into the world. Why not like, you know, when you're passing as well? And some of these are also registered nurses. Like it's amazing. Like there's just all these different, you know, modalities and things popping up all over the place. So anyway, totally gone off track. <laughs> but <laughs> maybe you could tell us a little bit about um, how long you've been, I guess, what you would call a professional light worker. I'm doing like the little rabbit ears things and no one can see me. Um, <laughs> tell us a little bit about your journey with your own spiritual business or soul-led business. Yep. Yeah, so like I never actually expected to have a soul-led business or to actually do readings at all. So I was being mentored just more to find out more about my my own abilities and understand it a little bit more because I was told in a reading, you have psychic abilities. And that was my wake up moment it was like, oh my gosh, like I've always had this and felt intuition, but I didn't, I didn't connect it with being psychic. So it started from there. I was like, okay, well, and I got a mentor similar to June. I got a mentor to help me to understand it. And I went through that. And then as I went and I did a few readings and whatnot, it actually escalated really quickly. It was like, <laughs> wow, I can do this. And then, so it was like, wow, I'm going to create an Instagram and put, try and get my name out there. And all of a sudden I got heaps of followers and whatnot, like not millions, not even thousands, like, but more than I was expecting. And I was like, wow, okay. And I just kind of went with it and followed, like I said, my intuition with it all. So from there, it really stemmed like, and then working with my mentor, she's like, your guides are telling me it's now time to get yourself a website. And do you notice I'm a real doer. Once you tell me to do something and I know it's for <laughs> my highest good, I'm like, done. <laughs> Give me the tick box list. 
by that afternoon, I'd signed up to a website place. I'd started, you know, putting it out there and putting it together. I think within like two or three days, I had a website up and up. Yeah, and wow, running. that's crazy. That's fast. <laughs> <laughs> so um, from there, I just started reading, doing readings. I put it out there. I literally charged twenty dollars, I think, for half an hour readings because I was holy moly. Like, where was I when you were doing twenty dollar readings? <laughs> Because I was just like, oh, I'm just starting out. And I, at the time, I actually referred to myself as a baby psychic because, and I'm doing the quotes myself now, <laughs> but I'm like, I'm a baby psychic. Like I'm still crawling and, you know, I have, I'm not walking yet. So I started doing that and it was mainly actually friends. Once they saw yeah. more following me on Instagram and saw I was doing it, it was a lot of friends. And then I remember, so I only started doing this a couple of years ago, really, and uh, one of the lockdowns we were in in Sydney, I remember sitting there in you know, my comfy clothes and my Ugg boots and all of that sort of stuff. And all of a sudden on my website, ping, I've got a session. And it was that day because at that stage I hadn't worked out on my website to put a buffer. And it was literally like, oh, my goodness, I've got some random person who's booked in with me and it's in like an hour. So I had oh, no, no time to overthink it or anything like that. And I went to, and I said to Julian at the time, oh my gosh, I've, I've got my first real client. And I was so excited. I went off and I did this reading and it was amazing. Like it was amazing. So, and she, it just helped her so much. And for me, I walked out and it was that validation that I needed to go, I'm doing what I'm meant to be doing and I can actually do it. I'm not the imposter. Like I can I can actually read for people because when you read your friends, June, as you'd know, you'd think, well, how much is it because of what I know of yes. them and how much is yeah. actually coming through? Mm. So reading for an absolute stranger and it's hitting the mark and she's going, yep, that resonates. Yep, that's, oh, my gosh, wow. Like that for me was that absolute validation. And it just exploded from, from there and I just kept getting clients. So my biggest place, like I do have Facebook, but I have hardly any followers on there. Instagram is honestly where it's at for me. And that's where I find my clients because I feel that they're very, um, they're drawn to me because they're at a similar stage in life usually um, and really relate to me. I actually get a lot of clients who have, so for those who follow me will know, I've been through a divorce and I've been through that with children and come around and gone through all that trauma. And I feel like a lot of my clients drawn in are people who are suffering through a similar thing because yeah. they can relate. But it just started from there. Like it, I, there was no expectation. There was no plan. Like I said before, there was no strategy. I didn't work with a business mentor going, I'm going to make heaps. And it was more that with the mentor I was working with at the time kept saying to me, you're not charging enough. You're not charging enough. And I would slowly increase my prices because I'm like, okay, I'm going from a baby psychic to a toddler psychic, to, <laughs> you know. So I had to, I went through that journey whilst building my business as well. And it was really learning to trust myself throughout that process. Um and many people who follow me know I actually work a corporate mongrel job full full time as well. Yeah, that was going to be my next question is um, you are, yeah, still working full time. You don't have to say, I don't know how much you want to say about exactly what it is that you do. I, I'm happy to share. So in yeah. my corporate muggle job, I'm actually a learning and development specialist. I work in instructional design for, and so it's a job where I help people. I help people learn in their role. I work in the finance industry, so it's very regulated. So it's interesting. I sort of fell into a very creative, ser like serving others kind of job in such a corporate world where you are kind of limited in a box of yeah. what you could do. So, yeah, and it's amazing even the guys at work who are in this corporate world, how much they've embraced my spiritual business as yes. well. And I absolutely love that. And this is the thing is that a lot of people think anyone who does this type of work must have always been into it or must have always, you know, um, come from this type of background. And that's not the case most of the time. I would say at all. Um, my background was also, I used to work in HR. I was in retail operations um, and training. So I've always sort of had that training background, but I've had a load of muggle jobs <laughs> sort of moving my way, <laughs> you know, through retail. And for the past 10 years, I have, like, since I had kids, um, as a lot of you might be able to resonate with, I actually have never gone back to full-time work because 
I have done part-time things and then always had a little business on the side. We used to run cafes, um, myself and my partner. I've had cafes in, um, you know, Melbourne. So we've had brick and mortar businesses. I, the first business I ever started on my own was, what was it? Oh, it was called Mum on the Run. It was a personal assistant, um, on virtual assistant business that I did around my daughter as well. Um, I used to run resume, um, workshops for uh, training organizations and helping people find jobs because of my background in HR. And uh, what else did I do? Oh, I was doing first aid training because that was all teaching as well. And then I ended up, I was doing business coaching or business mentoring. That was the last thing I did before sliding into this spiritual stuff. (laughs) And it was similar to Shannon's story where, um, I didn't, there was no way if you had told me a year before I started doing psychic readings that I would have believed you coming from teaching first aid to people and also doing that business mentoring stuff on the side that I would have ever thought that I would have ended up doing this type of work. No way. I would have, I would have thought it was cool because I always loved this side of things, but I would have laughed. (laughs) I probably would have laughed and gone, no. And this is the thing is that, um, you sometimes just aren't to know what is in the future for you because if you're not at that stage yet and you, and I know that I was supposed to do this, like similar to Shannon, I know I was meant to be here, but if I had been shown that um, or been told that by an intuitive or been, you know, shown that by my own guides, I would have probably cowered away and gone, oh my, like, no, like I'm not ready for that. Or that's too outrageous, but slowly bit by bit, you know, things changed and my business coaching actually started (laughs) to take on an intuitive turn. And I was seeing like, you know, not realizing it was intuitive. I was seeing how their business should be structured or what should come next or how they should put things. And then next minute it's accidentally sliding into, you know, like inner child wounds (laughs) coming up. (laughs) Or this happened to you as a child, did it not? And they're like, how did you know that? Um, And then, you know, got myself a mentor to figure out what it was I was doing. And that just somehow evolved into, you know, this light work type of thing. But at the beginning, I was similar to Shannon in terms of balancing muggle work and spiritual type stuff. So what would you say has been the hardest part of figuring out this balance? So for me, I was very logical, very structured. Like I said, I come from a finance working background where everything is scheduled, you know. So it was finding how to fit that in as well as being a mom uh, and all of that sort of stuff. So that was probably like the biggest struggle for me is where is this going to fit? But it was also... I had a lot on my plate with what I was already doing, but it was like, no matter how much was on my plate and I'd struggle with that a little bit, I had to find time to do my spiritual work. So, because I, like I said, I kept feeling led that this is what I have to do. I'm here to serve others. So the struggle was to find the balance really for how do I fit both in? Like I don't want to let go. So I love my spiritual work but I love my muggle work as well. So it wasn't like I was in that position that it was, you know, that some others are like, oh, I hate my job and I just want to find a job where there's more flexibility. I love my job. I love who I work with. I've worked there 20 years. So we've got more time. Oh, yeah. So like though the guys that I work with are like family to me. So it wasn't like all of a sudden I wanted to go. So it was like, how do I balance both of these parts of me Mm. and so what I do have to do is time block and that's how I manage it is like okay well the the work day I'll do like this you know I have to do my my muggle job but of a night time once the kids are in bed I'll do readings and I have every second Friday off work so I offer readings on those Fridays that I don't work and on Saturdays around kids sport because once again I have to juggle it so it's For me, it was, it was that balance. Like I said, the progression of the business was very organic, but it was how do I fit it in? And even at the time, my mentor was saying to me, your guides are really worried because you're already quite a busy person, have a busy kind of lifestyle. Um, but I'm just like, yeah, but I just have to do this. I just have to do this. And I just kept hearing that. So it was like, okay, well, I'll, I will make this work. And over the years that I've been doing that, it has found its natural way of fitting into my yes. 
into yeah. my life. Yeah. And they call it like you expand, you're expanding, you're constantly expanding because at the start, when you add in something else, you go, oh gosh, this is hectic. Like, how am I going to continue doing this? But then it's like, oh, you kind of get used to it. And when you decide to add in, you know, like a little bit more and a little bit more, it's like your capacity to be able to take that on expands. And when I first started as well, I was still teaching first aid and doing um, what, what was business mentoring. And I would go from teaching first aid or working in the office at the um, the training organization, go into the car <laughs> and literally do remote readings from inside the car in between the time I probably had like an hour between needing to pick up my kids from school. So I would sit in the car and tune in <laughs> like with my cards and send through remote readings from inside the car. So there was like that transition period where it's all crammed in and you can I guess want to transition completely into spiritual work but you might not want to as well some people love just doing it on the side and this is the thing people you know get so caught up in well where is this going to go am I going to do this as a full-time job and they think so far ahead but then they think so far ahead and they get so worried about it they just don't take that next little step which is just try it first and see if you actually like it and see if it's your thing and so many people are stuck in that spot because they are thinking well how is this going to eventuate? There's no point starting because I can never see myself doing this full time. And they're just stuck there. But I would just say, just give it a go and see, take the first little step first and see if you like it. Because we're creating our life as we go. We're sort of, we get to choose what it is that this turns into. And, you know, you might think, well, let's go and see a psychic that can tell me where this is going to go. But there's so many thousands of different possibilities of how this can go. And you get to choose. Um, And I chose pretty early on that I did like the job that I was doing, but I was like, it felt like nothing compared to this type of work. (laughs) And I was really quick to go, you know what? I am going to have to take a leap at some point. And yes, there's going to be a a drawback in money for a little bit, um, but hopefully (laughs) I can trust myself that I'm going to be able to hit the ground running with this and I can make up for that gap quickly which luckily for me, I was, but because of my previous business experience, it was almost like I could hit the ground running quite quickly. Um, Whereas, you know, other people might take longer to transition because they're still learning it as they go. So there's no real specific timeline that anyone needs to follow, especially if you're still loving your work and that's what you want to, you know, and that's what you like doing while you still love it, do it, like go for it. And I've also found that my readings and whatnot back off at the right sort of time. The universe works in wonderful ways, yeah. right? <laughs> when when the muggle job is picking up and it's it's quite, you know, it, it, it's energetically taking a lot of me to do that. I find that my readings and whatnot naturally just drop off. And it's yeah. like, oh, and I'll have a look and be like, oh, wow, I don't have anyone booked in this week. Wow. Okay. And I don't think I don't have that lack mindset. Like, oh gosh, I have no readings in. I have to try and find them. I think more of a case. So, and I'm thinking my, my guides, my team have blocked that time out for me because obviously I'm about to have a big week. Mm, Yeah. And all of a sudden I will, one of the kids will get sick or work will ramp up or, you know, I'm just a little bit exhausted because I've got so much. Because life. life. Yeah. (laughs) And it's like, and I'll get to the end of that week and I'll just be so thankful, like, wow. So it's not that you've got to push it. And it's for me, and I know like you have to think about money. There's bills to be paid, right? But in this, I think in this industry, if you're thinking too much about the money, then I don't know how successful you're going to be. I think it needs to come from a different place. I think if you're there for the right reasons, the money will come as a result. Yeah. And I totally believe in that too. Is it for, It's never been about the money. I never even thought about I'm going to get into this because of the money. I got into this because it felt so good to be able to help other people and that's what lights me up. And when I try to find clients, my mindset is I, you know, I wish that you find me or we can find each other if we can help each other. And then the right types of amazing clients just turn up because that attracts, you know, what they like attracts like, and that's what comes in. And the universe will take care of you money wise. Um, if there's the right intention coming from behind it, when you're, you're coming from that 
lack of mentality or I've got to have this many readings because I need this amount of money. It doesn't work. I just feel like it has the opposite effect. So I also tell my guides how many, like I might look a couple of weeks ahead and go, okay, I've got some space here, guys. I'd love to have four or five clients this week. Like it doesn't have to be heaps because I, like I said, I've got to try and balance and fit it in. If it was full time, I might be more like, oh, could I have, you know, four clients a day or whatnot? But I'll say to them, guys, oh, I've got space. I'd love to have four or five clients this week, but it's not an expectation. And it's amazing how by putting it out there for those weeks, it's I'll look back and go, hang on a minute. Oh, wow. I did have four or five clients this week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It works out really good. It works out really well. Um, I was going to ask you as well, at the beginning of um, actually stepping out and being like, okay, I'm going to do this as an offering, or I'm going to make my Instagram page, or I'm going to make my website, what were some of the hardest parts of actually taking those steps, or did you not find it hard at all? Uh, but I know that there's a lot of people who struggle with certain things about actually taking that leap off. What were your probably challenges, biggest challenges at the start? It was fear, to be honest, because it was like, wow, like people around me, I've had the conversations that I am a psychic and I can do readings and whatnot, but it was like at building the Instagram, it's like I'm actually really going public. Yes. I am coming <laughs> full on out of the woo-woo closet here. And it was like, wow, you know, my family going to see this, my extended family, and how are they going to feel about it? And people I work with and all of this sort of stuff. So it was that fear of what are people going to think of me and put it out there and the reception was actually amazing. So that fear was just within myself. But it was also in the beginning, like, what do I post? Yeah, I'm a, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm a psychic, but what do I put in my first? And my, I, if you look back in my Instagram, I've never deleted any old posts because I love to see the evolution of where I've I've taken my journey. And my first post is like a mediumship book that I started reading, and it was just that, and it just started from there. But it was like figuring out what content do I put up, and so I had to really step back for a minute as I was starting it off and going, hang on a minute, if I was someone who wanted to connect with someone like myself, what would I want to know? Yeah. And so I started to build my post based off, off that. And I find, I don't know about you, but the posts where it's very personal and very vulnerable tend to be the ones that have the most engagement. So, 100%. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so it's putting yourself out there and being vulnerable was quite a challenge as well. But I found that that came back because people would very much relate to it. So it was, it was worth being vulnerable. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the thing is um, for me, I, and that's exactly what I've written here, that one of the hardest parts was that fear of coming out of the closet of actually stepping out because this is not your usual <laughs> work, um, you know, career uh, path that, I'll, you know, it is becoming more common, but it's not, I, I in my group of friends, I'm the only one. Like <laughs> out of both sides, my all my husband's friends, all of my friends, I'm the only one in this line of work. Of course, once you start it, I've got loads of friends now and my husband's always like, I can't keep up. Who's this again? Is this another one from your woo-woo group? He always says, is this a woo-woo friend? And then he's like, oh, because my husband owns his own business as well. Someone's come through the coffee van and um, they're one of your woo-woo friends and they, they know you from, you know, the woo-woo community, but they'll, you'll find your tribe eventually. But at the beginning, it's so lonely. Like it's, was, it's just, it was just me. Um, and there was so, you work it up, honestly, you work it up to be the biggest thing in your head. And you literally, this is most of us, go to worst case scenario, like, everyone's going to hate me. Everyone's going to think you're the biggest weirdo. Um, well, this is me anyway. This is what I do. <laughs> this is what I do. Oh, I was exactly the okay, same. Okay, good, good to know. Um, people are going to create an I hate June club <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> and they're going to gather on Tuesdays and all talk about all my posts. And like, as far as I know, I don't think that that exists. And if it does, you know what, I've gotten to the point where it does get easier to really not care as much because this is not everyone's path and same goes for you. This is your path and this is what you came here to do. And who is anybody else to judge that? And who is anybody else to stop you from doing what it is that you came here to do? If they don't understand, that's okay. It's not their path. You have to be okay with that and you have to move forward. Of course, there's those, you know, I've had people that just don't get it 
And there's those pangs of like, oh, that, you know, unacceptance. But at the same time, I think, okay, well, I just wish you all the best and let's move on and keep doing what I've got to do because I can't allow, well, no one can allow that to dictate how they're going to, their life is going to, you know, play out. So you can relate that, like Julian says to a lot of the time to people, has anyone got a mate who's a lawyer? I don't know anyone who has a mate who's a lawyer because everyone know. can't stand lawyers. Because <laughs> they, so I'm like, well, if lawyers get away with it and they live their life and they're good, well, me as a psychic, and it's funny, so many people embrace it mm. and share their stories with you all of a sudden. So I've actually found when I thought I'd be very isolated and that people would turn their backs on me, it was actually quite the opposite. My community and my friendship group actually expanded. Yep, same. I, I 100% gained probably 50 times more <laughs> than what I lost. I could, from what I lost, I could probably count on one hand or less than. I want. I don't want to single out a person, but it's probably more <laughs> one person than I can think of. Um, but it was much more the opposite than, you know, what I thought. And there are some people that don't understand, but that's okay. They just, we just don't talk about it. It's not like you walk around going ghost spirits, um, you know, um, I don't know, psychic, psychically reading people all the time. You just are normal. Like I don't talk about it at all. And then when people ask me, they're quite surprised. They're like, I've spoken to you for the like five weeks in a row. You know, these are mums at, you know, my daughter's, you know, extracurricular activities. And they're like, why have you never mentioned this? And I'm like, well, we haven't spoken about careers. I'm not just going to walk around going, I can, you know, tell things about your future if you let me tune into you. Like it's not. You don't have the tattoo on your forehead. I'm a psychic and I can read <laughs> you if you want to. Yeah, exactly. Um, so one of the, I guess, quickly, what would be probably the best piece of advice for getting over that hurdle <laughs> of fear of judgment, imposter syndrome? I had fear of I'm not good enough. Um, who am I to think that I can do this? All of that sort of stuff. I will realize you will never feel ready. You just have to not think about it and do it. <laughs> yeah, and it is. It's just taking that first step. Do it little, do it small, do it yeah. how you're comfortable with and build it up from there. Don't think that you need to go out with this big bang approach when you start. You can start yeah. it small. You could do a private group on Facebook and just invite those that you feel comfortable with and build it up from there. Do it your own, like whatever it is, do your own journey but it's, yeah, unfortunately, it's a little bit of facing your fears. You have to, if you want, and you a feel. A lot of facing your fears. <laughs> <laughs> Just little baby steps if that's what it takes for you instead of like going full big bang. Just yep. take a little step, put a little post on. You can make it a private thing so that you can control who sees it if that's what you're comfortable with. Yeah, absolutely. And I would agree. I have that written down too, actually, <laughs> which, is, <laughs> which is, I'll show you, start small, literally right there. Um, and I was afraid of showing my face a lot at the beginning, but it was lucky that um, I had this other business previously where I kind of got a little bit used to it because I hate to say it to all you people out there who are like, oh, I don't want to show myself. I don't want to, um, I hate taking selfies or, you know, recording myself or the sound of my voice. Like when I re-listened to Shannon had a, uh, she's got an amazing podcast. If I haven't already mentioned it on here, <laughs> Shannon, <laughs> Shannon, what is it? The Intuitive Guide podcast. It is, um, yes. And I listened to my voice on the episode that I feature on and I'm like, that is, that's a horrible sound. <laughs> <laughs> but you just have to do it and because people want to know you. I, I'm sorry, but when I, I'm looking, someone's like, oh, I, I refer you to this amazing person who does Reiki, right? And I look at their Instagram and I think, but who are you? There's not one picture I can see your room. I can see your crystals that you use. I can see what books you read. <laughs> But I want to connect with you as a person. I'm not going to know unless I can see you. So um, at some point, not everyone has to do this right, but for me, and I'm not sure, are you the same, Shannon? You like to I'm see I'm absolutely the same. Yeah. I need to okay. see that person because hmm. when you're going to someone for a soul-led business or any business really, I want to connect with the person. Yes, same, same. Yeah, and it depends. Like if you are, obviously if it's a... um. Uh, you know, a, a service where you don't, it's not a personable business, that's not going to matter. So obviously if you've got a business where, I don't know, maybe you write 
um, great resumes or something and we can see your work in the examples of your resumes that you write, I probably don't need to see you. But (laughs) if you're going to be putting your hands all over me or if you're going to be tapping into my energetic field, um, if you're, you know, even, even when I go, I don't know, to day spas and people walk out and I'm like, I hope I don't get that one sometimes. <laughs> you've got to vibe with it. This is a very personal work. As a light worker, you're going to have to vibe with their energy. You, they're going to need to at least see a picture <laughs> to know. Um, and this is actually really great. If you put yourself out there a little bit, um, people will know instantly, yes, um, that person's for me or no, they're not. And if they're not, that's great. They will not waste your time <laughs> sending you inquiries um, and straight away that person, no, they'll just move on to the next person. So um, you will call in the people that are for you, the more you can put yourself out there. And like Shannon said, start little. It took me a long time to be able to put a picture of myself up. And now you look at my Instagram, it's horrible. It's just all photos of me. <laughs> <basically>. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's the same. It's either tarot cards or me. That's all you're going to get, yeah. really. <laughs> well, that's what you're selling, essentially, really, is you're selling you, Shannon. And um, this is why I was called to do a reading with you because I I knew you um, from the group and I was like, I love her energy. I, I want a reading with her. Um, yeah, so also in terms of, well, where do I even start with a small business? How do I even get myself out there? You said you started with an Instagram and then a website. Yeah. yeah. Um, yep. So progress from that. The Instagram for me was it was comfortable. I could kind of put a little bit on there, and I could really control what was on there. And then it kind of got okay. The Instagram's just not cutting it anymore. It does need a website with a bit more information on there about me and what I offer. And as you would know too, my website's evolved over time. More mm-hmm. offerings have been put on yes. there. So. Yeah, and that's the next thing is people think, okay, I've got to do Facebook, Facebook group, Instagram, YouTube, website, and they want to get all their ducks in a row before they start anything. My advice is pick one thing that you resonate with and just go with that one thing first because if you throw them all out there, you're going to do a lot of things but not very well. (laughs) So I would say pick something that you feel comfortable with first and do that. And some people like, I feel comfortable in a Facebook group because I can show my face and I know who's in there. Um, and that's what I feel comfortable with. And if that's what you feel comfortable with, start with that first. My group was definitely helped me to gain the courage. So my free group, by the way, Psychic Expansion with June Mac. Um, that's kind of where I started putting myself out there the most. And then as that group started to grow, I slowly grew my own confidence to get myself out there on the front line. And now I have, you know, everything, but it was one by one. Now I've got YouTube. Now I've got a podcast. Now I've got a website. Don't try and overwhelm yourself and begin with everything. Just start with those small things and things will grow and evolve over time. Even in terms of services, start with one or two. What did you say? You just started with your $20 reading? Just the one, yeah, that was all yeah. I did to begin with, yeah, and that built up my confidence. It wasn't, and it helped me get over that imposter syndrome. Yeah, and that's the thing with pricing too. My first reading was fifty five dollars, mm-hmm. so it's, it was a little bit more than twenty. <laughs> <laughs> But the thing is, I did a ton of free practice readings before I did that. So I was probably worse, to be honest, because that was not, I charged nothing for the longest time. I was just like, I'm just practicing. I'm just practicing probably for too long. Um, and then when I didn't release my first one, it was 55 and that's slowly gone up, you know, from there. So if it makes you feel better, start with it small, but I'd say they're going to go up pretty quickly. Did your prices go up pretty fast? Oh, yeah. Within a few months, it went from $20 to, okay, I'll charge $60. From $60 went to $80. From $80, it went to where it is now. So it was like, okay, wow, yeah. And it just felt right. And it was someone had to say to me um, that whilst you were doing a reading, because there there was guilt attached to it. There was this guilt that I had, like I felt guilty taking people's money when it feels like you're just having a chat. Mm -hmm. And someone said to me, no, you're actually having an energetic exchange. Yes, yeah. They're paying you for the energetic exchange that they're getting. So you do need to charge for that. But what someone also said to me, which really hit, and this is for this podcast is really relevant. You know, if people come and they're going to pay for my reading, they're much more open and invested. 
So with the free readings I was giving, it was almost like people going, oh, yeah, I'll do it because it's not going to cost me anything other than maybe an hour of my time. Whereas if someone has an actual financial investment in that hour, they're going to be so much more open and so much more literally invested in that reading that you're going to give them because they are paying for it. And that for me was a bit of an eye opener. So I hope that helps others with that too and helps alleviate that guilt that you have too is that, you know, if people are coming, the readings are actually better. Like the quality of the reading is better because that person is open, you feel valued, and it's that great exchange rather than you're just paying me, we're having a chat. Yes, I 100% agree. And also something that uh, this is a really great point to bring up is that guilt that you get over, you know, charging for things and um, not devaluing yourself, but not valuing your work enough. I'll tell you what will happen. And this is speaking from someone who's done readings. Um, it's been out for three and a half years now. Um, I learned this the hard way that if you don't charge enough and you're putting more energy out than what you're getting in, um, you will end up energetically on your ass. <laughs> yes. So it drains your energy. It's an actual thing. It's like I literally have heard my spirit guides go, you're not listening. We're telling you to put the price up and you're not listening. This is what happens when the energy exchange is not right. So they show me, my spirit team show me energy exchange in an infinity symbol. Um, so yeah. like, you know, constantly. And if one side is bigger, as in I'm giving all of this and you're paying me minimal, which, you know, for me, I was like, no, 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 that's fine. That's enough. That's okay. But energetically wise, I'm raising my vibration. I'm taking an hour to prepare for the reading sometimes, half an hour to disconnect, cleanse my space. You know, that's like a lot of time of extra work. Plus how much it does take from you, you know, energetically, if you're not getting that right exchange back, I would do a few readings and end up not being able to get out of bed because I put out so much and I wasn't getting back enough. And when I started to actually feel okay and balanced was when I was charging the right amounts. And I always know when it's time for my prices up because I'll feel that feeling in my gut that, okay, this is, this is how much energy it's taking me to do this. And, um, it's, I'm not getting it back, you know, so it needs to go up slightly. So that's kind of when I, when I know. So if you yeah. don't do it to begin with, you will end up like me. And I literally burnt myself out. I kind of a countless amount of time, amount of times because I, you know, we've all got that. I'm getting the nudge at the moment that it needs to go up even ever so slightly. It's, <laughs> And it's just, it just plays over in your head. And it's like, you keep getting like, like June says, if you guys obviously listen to it, but it's like the feather, what is it? The feather, the brick or like the semi trail. The feather, the brick and the stick. The feather, the brick and the stick. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, I feel like at the moment, the feather's been there for a while, but they're starting to escalate that it yes. needs to happen. And it is because I am getting more clients. It is starting to do that. Yep. So it's like, okay. And the yep. energy that it's taking to do that, mm-hmm. you know, like I said, that energetic exchange has to be worthwhile for both myself and the client that's yes. coming to me. Yep, absolutely. The feather, the stick, and the brick. So if you don't listen to the nudges, the feather, the stick comes and pokes you a little bit harder. And then if you still don't listen, the brick comes and lands on you and you won't be able to get out of bed for a week. <laughs> you're it's so happened to me recently, as many people yeah. know. I got quite sick recently. I had COVID, but then it wasn't just COVID. I actually ended up getting um, that sick that I got a secondary infection. And that's oh amazing. Oh, my gosh. And then I had um, a reading. I went to Mind Body Spirit in Sydney not long after I had felt, I think it was a week after I started to feel better. And like I was bedridden. I have yeah. not been that for a long yeah. time. And the person that read for me told me that, um, and she's read for me a few times. So I really trust her. She's like, you were having an ascension flu. So mm-hmm. it's like, think yeah. of it like, at the moment, my spirit guides are showing me an image of Mario, like, but like how you level up, like you get through yes. one level yep. and it's like, okay, yep. now you're on level two, now you're on level three. And so that for me is a symbol that it's time to le- go to the next yep. level. Absolutely. And that's what happens is like your clients maybe become less, but because the money exchange is different, um, it feels more, it feels more even. And then you have time to like, you know, I had time to do more psychic mentoring type stuff uh, because my my readings went up slightly, but you know, I could talk about this all day. I probably should wrap it up <laughs> because I'm like, I don't even know how long I've been talking for now. Um, I just wanted to ask probably the last thing is what uh, would you say would be the biggest thing 
or biggest piece of advice you wanted to give people or biggest um, thing that helped you throughout this journey? Don't take others' advice. (laughs) (laughs) It's probably the biggest thing. Like, yeah, take it on and almost smile and nod. But it's in these types of businesses, it is not your usual, I'm going to start this and I'm going to start selling this product and I need to do steps X, Y, and Z. With this, it's not that. It can be, it, it probably more needs to be instead of this step, then this step, then this step. It is you know, you're going left, then right, then left, then right, then left, then right, and just figuring it out as you go. So having a soul-led business, honestly, listen to your intuition. Um, call in the right clients is also another big one. So June on her little psychic school group has an amazing meditation that she did for us a couple of months back yeah. now yeah. about calling in your right clients. And so ever since then, I've continued to do that when I feel that I need to. So it's a, like, don't just feel like you have to do it for service for others. Do practice what you preach, do those meditations, do those things that you need to do to call in the right clients. But also I found meditation great to know what was my next steps. Yes. Wonderful. That's great. That's such good advice. Um, Stick to your own lane. I love that. Um, And when I really started making headway in my business was when I shut out what everybody else was doing. Oh, look what this psychic is doing. Oh, look what this medium is doing. And, you know, you can cheer them on, but without comparing yourself or without being like, oh, I should have done that. That's better than mine. That is the like. That is honestly the worst. Um, and I'd had times where I'd look at uh, you know people that I looked up to, and I'd think, oh, I should, you know, her her bio is so much better than mine. Maybe I should adjust mine so it sounds more like hers. But it didn't sound like me. And when I realized, like, no, I actually that's doing me more damage than 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 good. <laughs> um, is when I it's I see you start to call in the right people when you start to actually make that headway when you stop comparing yourself. To other people and actually stick to what just feels good for you. Um, that and probably the other piece of advice is get yourself a community um, mm. or surround yourself with people who, you know, are going to cheer you on with this because if this feels right for you, I have no doubt. If you've got a little inkling there and you think, oh, like I'm still so far away, but if you can imagine something that I 100% believe that it is possible for you and For me, it's 100% changed my life, 360 being the best thing that I have ever done. And I don't know, have a think about that for you. Is this an opportunity that you are willing to pass up? And this is a great thing. It doesn't have to be like me. You don't have to do it full time. You can do it part time like Shannon, who eventually, though, you would love to one day take it full time though, right, Shan? Absolutely. Yeah. One day, but it, like, whilst I'm still enjoying my muggle job, I will balance both, but yeah. I, I, I have seen already the visions and whatnot that this will become a full time. Yes. And thing. I believe that too. Very, I think quite quickly, quicker than you think. <laughs> That's just <laughs> me throwing that in there. But if you can see it, it's possible no matter how outrageous it seems. I saw myself on stage teaching psychic development years ago and I've only just really gotten to that point now um yeah but I would have I saw it and I thought that is crazy Uh, like as if as if you'll be doing that and it feels like home it's my favorite part really is teaching things but get yourself a community surround yourself with people who you know are going to motivate you and help you that's been a big part you know even having Shannon um you know in my group and there's lots of other amazing intuitives in the little psychic school who are starting or in the middle of running their own businesses that's been so good there's lots of free groups too now that you can get into actually don't know any off the top of my head um also i do actually offer one-on-one um spiritual business mentoring um which is the same package as my psychic mentoring so that's just at my gmac.com um i'll pop the little links up but if you wanted to find shannon where are the best places to find you Instagram, obviously. So Shannon, the intuitive guide, I am on there. And then my website as well is Shannon, the intuitive guide.com.au. So you can find me on both of those, but Instagram where is absolutely where it's at for me. Yep. And um, in terms of services, you have, you said you do psychic readings and not one is the same. So you can't do <laughs> 
Yeah, so you've got psychic readings that I'll do. They're called um, sessions with Shannon. I have a subscription membership where you get a monthly tarot reading, a personal one, and I do a full moon and a new moon one as well as some other exclusive content. And I, you join my free Facebook group. So that is called Shine with Shannon. What? I'm um, not even in your free Facebook group. What the hell? <laughs> So I I'll find you that. after this. Yeah. Um, so I have that as well. Um, and I also offer tarot card reading. So if you are a little, and I do those remotely, so I'll email them to you. So if you time poor or you're just a little bit nervous, it's a great way to dabble your toes in there. And I do also offer psychic mentoring, but I mine's very different to June. Mine's one-on-one, very much in tune with what they do, what the person's doing. Um, and it's just more, yeah. Uh, but I, to be honest, I really love my psychic readings and whatnot. Probably a little bit more. <laughs> I was, was going to say about um, with your psychic mentoring as well. You know, if it's something that you think, oh, I really need to step into this space, and this sound, this sounds like something I'd love to do, but I don't know where to start. I haven't, you know, started opening up my intuitive abilities yet. Even if you don't feel like you want to, I'm not the right person for you to mentor with. I offer one on one as well as um, course stuff. Contact Shannon. There's um, another person in our group, and I'll shout him out because I didn't shout him out last time, is um, Matt <laughs> Matt Mastery also does <laughs> psychic mentoring. Um, there's a whole bunch of people that I could also forward you to because you'll know when you find the right person that's for you. And for me, um, again, that was one of the integral parts of and still is. I'm constantly always psychic medium energy healing, mentoring with someone, um, because then I get to teach other people what it is that I learned. So um, it's that's probably a big part of if you think I just need that confidence boost, go for it. Because we've we've spoken about it before and probably we need to be getting royalties from Lindy Jewel, but both of us <laughs> <laughs> have mentored with Lindy at some point um, on a few different things. And, and just working with her really, you know, she was my first one. So just getting that confidence to be like, okay, I actually can do this. Sometimes that's that's all you need. And it is, it's finding that right one, like you said. I know we're wrapping up, but I was drawn to Lindy because there was no BS. Like it was just so straightforward. And at the time, being a little bit time poor, that's what I needed. I didn't need someone that was going to fluff around and go, oh, you're awesome and you're amazing. I, I needed someone that was going to be real with me and get straight to the point. And that was why at that point in time, she really resonated for me and really helped bring me along. Would I mentor with her now? I don't know. I'm not sure if that would still be the right one for me. And that's cool because you can. You can be mentored yeah. by many people over the years if you want. You don't just have to stick to one person. I, I've had many and um, I const- you constantly go from what you evolve that you know you need to you know learn about and I go from one to another to another but I also go big gaps in between where I don't I'm not particularly learning from someone in particular at the moment in case you're interested I'm doing mediumship with Suzanne Guzman um she's like a have you heard of her Shan I have yeah yeah (laughs) she's like a cute little middle-aged American woman but I've been watching a lot of her things and really learning a lot from her but you take what resonates from you from each one and then move move to the next. <laughs> and YouTube's also a great resource too. Like if you don't, from a financial point of view, if you're not ready to make that investment in with a mentor, Google has so many different things. Find free groups, find what works for you, and then try and build that confidence up to you till you are ready to actually make that investment in yourself. There's heaps. If anyone's interested, you can email or message me or Shannon in regards to um, mentors. If you want to ask us a question about uh, about starting your own spiritual business as well, make sure you just reach out. I um, What actually started it with my mentoring is I was psychic mentoring people, but then they were getting to the point where they wanted to start their own business. So they'd continue on with the psychic mentoring, but as spiritual business mentoring, um, and then kind of continue on from there. It's just nice to sometimes have that cheerleader or that person that can hold your hand through it. And I, at the beginning of my journey, I did have a um, business coach when I first started. And I learned, I learned heaps from that. Have you heard of Carly Marie, Shannon? No, I haven't. She's not doing it anymore, but that's who it was at the time. So that was, that was like four years ago though. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, I better go. Otherwise we'll never leave, but thank you so much for being um, on my podcast today, Shannon. And yeah, we will talk to you all soon guys. See you later. Little Psychics. I wanted to thank you for tuning in to the Little Psychic Podcast with June Mack. 
I am so grateful to have had you here. You can find me over at junemac.com or on all social media as Ms. June Mac. If you enjoyed today's episode, it would mean so much if you could please subscribe, rate, review and share. It's been an absolute privilege to be in your ears.